So here we have uh, question number five that we are going to consider on question number five of probability, 5.1. What expression best represents the shaded area of the following Venn diagrams? So we are given Venn diagrams, and in this case, we need the best part to represent. All right, 5.11. As we can see, guys, uh, this is uh, straightforward uh, from our presentation. This is where we have A and B. This part here is the part that represents A and B. So that's the intersection of A and B. So A and B, uh, or you can present it as an intersection. That is the part of A and B. Remember, we are talking of the shaded part. In this case, there is A and there is a section that is shaded outside of A, outside of A, meaning to say we are talking of what is not in A, the complement of A. That is not in A. So that is uh, uh, what we are given in that case. 5.2, state which of the following sets of events is mutually exclusive, meaning to say where we have a condition where the probability of two events who happen simultaneously at the same time is impossible. A and B, it's impossible for these two events to happen at the same time. So thus, there is no intersection. That's the condition of mutual exclusive. Okay, event one on A, the learners in grade 10 and the swimming team, the learners in grade 10, in the debating team, it's possible that someone in grade 10 can do both, can be in swimming team and can be in a debating team. It's possible. So there is an intersection there. There is A and B. It's possible for us to have this, so we cannot say they are mutually exclusive. If you check on C, the event, A1, the learners who take mathematics in grade 10 the learners who take physical sciences in the same grade 10, it's possible, guys, you are doing mathematics. Some of you are also doing physics, physical sciences. It's possible for, for you to do that. So meaning to say, on the intersection of A and B, there's something that we have. So it, they, we cannot say these ones are mutually exclusive. We cannot say. We cannot say, suppose it's the same grade 10, the same grade 10. But look what is happening at B. The learners in grade 8, then the learners in grade 12. This is impossible. You are in grade 12, you're in grade 8 at the same time. No, this is actually impossible. So many to say it cannot happen that we have got learners from grade 8 and also learners in grade 12. That means on the intersection of these two, if we are to present the learners in grade 8 will remain in grade 8, those in grade 12 will be in grade 12. They cannot have an intersection. So this is the one representing the mutually exclusive event. So it was going to be a B. I just understand your mathematical concept. 5.3, in a class of 40 learners, the following information is true. Seven learners are left-handed. 18 players play soccer, and this, this is what you're given. So out of this, these are uh, ones we are now asked, let L be the set of all left-handed people. So meaning to say whatever we see, the left-handed people, we are going to present with L. And those learners who play soccer, BS. 5.31. How many learners in the class are right-handed and do not play soccer? Okay, these people, they are left-handed, play soccer. Learners are, they play soccer and are left-handed. All 40 learners are either right-handed or left-handed. Meaning to say, we can have those ones who are also right-handed and do not play soccer. So the question is, how can we determine this? Okay, out of the 40 learners that we are given, it was going to be easier if you start with this one. 
Okay, so that I can impose, if you, if I just try to explain, you might not understand this whole idea of this question. So it was going to be easier for you if you present it on the diagram so that you see what exactly I'm going to try. So let's start with 5.32 uh, first so that you understand me, guys, because without this, it's going to be very, very difficult for you to understand me. It's a simple question, uh, though, but... For you to understand me, it will be difficult unless if you're someone who is into this as you are revising. Guys, you know, some of us, we are revising overnight. Some we are revising only one hour. Depends with your schedule of revision. Uh, but what is important is that you are revising, guys. All right. That is what is most important, that you are revising. Okay. This is what was going to happen so that you understand me here. We have got learners who are left-handed. And those ones who play soccer, L and S. So let's say these ones are left-handed. And these ones, they play soccer. Okay. They are those who are both four learners. They play soccer and are left-handed. Meaning to say that is actually four for both. They're in between these ones. You find them playing soccer and they're also left-handed. These ones are four. We move on. Guys, seven learners are left-handed. If you check here, these ones, they are left-handed. That is where the seven are. But out of these seven, there are four who are left-handed. And at the same time, they are playing soccer. So we must remove out of the seven, seven minus four, you remain with three. These ones. They are left-handed, only these ones. They have nothing to do with soccer. They, they, this one, they are left-handed. All right, so this one, they are left-handed. These ones, only. That is what we are seeing. They are left-handed. These ones here, they play soccer, these ones, and being left-handed here. This one's here. This is what we have. This is what we have. Four. Those are the ones that we are given. They play soccer and are left-handed. Meaning to say they are part of soccer. They're also part of left-handed. But what about the three? That's for left-handed only. Then 18 learners play soccer. Meaning to say this one is for soccer. This one. We all of this one. It's for soccer, this one. There are 18 that are inside. So if you are to remove now 18 minus 4, you're going to obtain a 14. You're going to obtain a 14 here uh, on this part. So here we are saying they are left-handed. So they since they are left-handed, you can say they are left-handed, this one, so that you understand me. They are left-handed. And do not and do not play soccer. They are not part of soccer. This is just left-handed only. But if we check here, this four, they are left-handed and they play soccer. So the question is: what about these 14? Can we say they play soccer only? Guys, we are. This is now we, we got we get this now to the something that is of real life. If you are left-handed and play soccer, what what about the rest? It means they yes, they do play soccer, these ones. But what are they in terms of being left-handed or being right-handed? Because if you are not left-handed, it means you're going to be part of right-handed. Guys, here is what we have. All foot learners, they are either right-handed or left-handed. Meaning to say, when we approach you, it's either you're left-handed or right-handed. So these ones, we are saying, how are they? They will be part of the right hand because this one, they are left-handed only. 
So these ones, they will be part of the right hand and play soccer. These ones, they will be part of right hand and play soccer. And play soccer at the same time. They are playing soccer at the same time, this one. Being of right hand. So what about these ones outside? They do not play soccer. They are not left-handed. They do not play soccer. So many say, what are they? They are right-handed. Also, these ones. Because if you are not left-handed, guys, what are you? You are right-handed. So many say, these ones, they are right-handed. So how many are they? You are going to notice that, okay, out of these people, the 40, you are going to say, so those are the ones that you are being asked here. These ones that you are seeing, those are the ones that they are asking you to say, how many learners in the class are right-handed and do not play soccer? This one. So that's why I was saying, if you are to understand it from the diagram, it was going to be easier because this is the, these are the ones that you want. These are the ones that they're asking. They are right-handed and do not play soccer. These ones outside from the view of a real-life situation. So this is the section that we want. So how can we calculate this? We can simply obtain it because we are given that there are 40 learners. So out of the 40 learners that we have, we are simply going to remove these three. We remove these four. We also remove these 14. By doing this, we are going to remain with 19, which are outside of this set. Which are not part of soccer and being left-handed. So there, we are going to answer the first question, 5.31, to say there are 19 people that we are seeing there. who do not play soccer and are right-handed. We're simply going to have it that way. So if you understand the Venn diagram, it was going to be easier in that case to say, okay, which section, which section am I talking about? Or you're simply going to take out of the 18 players who play soccer, you know that out of these 18, they are also part of being right-handed. So I'm going to remove the 18 from 40. I'm going to remove the 18 from 40. If you understand it now, now you can understand it even without the diagram. So we're simply going to subtract the 18 because they play soccer. There we do not want soccer. So these ones already, they play soccer. But out of 18, there is a four who play soccer, these ones, and are left-handed. So you must remove that from a seven to have those ones who do not play soccer because we just want the part of not playing. So it will be seven minus four, which is three. So that was simply going to give us the same answer if you understand it that way. But uh, from the diagram, I think it was going to be easier. So it's still one and the same thing because by answering 5.32, which is your diagram, guys, you are also answering your 5.31, so it is not uh, a disadvantage if you do this way. Actually, in exam, you can do that. Answer the other question, then you go back to the other one. Just pick up your answer because you can see, okay, there are 19, you just write your answer there. All right, so I don't know which one do you understand, which is easier. So we have already answered this. So the question is now determine the probability that a learner is A, left-handed, or plays soccer. All right, the probability that is left-handed or plays soccer. Let's see what we are given there. 5.33, A, the probability that is left-handed or plays soccer. Which part are we talking about? On the diagram, this is the whole of this part here. If we check it from the diagram, that is where we have left-handed or O. O, this one. Union. The union of L and S. The union of L and S. So it was supposed to be 14 plus 4 plus 3. You add everything. 
you are going to obtain 21. So they are 21 out of the total of the wall number that you are given. Remember, there are 40 learners that we are given the whole of this set. There are 40 learners. So it was going to be 21 out of 40. You can write it as a decimal, as a fraction. It's a percentage. It's up to you. All right, let's check the other part. They are right-handed and play soccer. Being right-handed and play soccer. Which part? Which section are we talking about? All right. Being right-handed and play soccer, meaning to say, according to our understanding, guys, these ones, we do understand they are right-handed, but remember I said they do not play soccer. So we have to enter inside now here. Let's interpret our diagram. These ones, they are left-handed. The three, these ones, the four that we are seeing here, they are those who are left-handed and play soccer. So what about these ones, 14? Those are the ones that are right-handed and play soccer, these ones. We are talking about the soccer only. So this one was a, uh, a real-life situation type of a question where you have to interpret according to the real-life condition. It means this part is the one that will be right-handed and being and playing soccer at the same time. Not to say it's soccer only, no. Because you are saying if you are not left-handed, you are right-handed. So that, you, that was the condition of, of this question. You have to put it in a real-life situation. So the probability of being right-handed and playing soccer at the same time, it was going to be this 14. So that's 14 out of 40. So if you reduce it, it was going to be 7 out of 20. You can write it as a decimal in whatever way that you have. So probability questions, if you check, I introduced uh, the uh, on the uh, on the ATP for this term. If you check there on probability, there are real-life situations that you're supposed to consider. If you're not part of being left-handed, you're on the right-handed. That is this situation that you're given. It's either or. It's either you're left-handed or you're right. It's either or. You are one. Left-handed or right-handed. So if you are not left-handed, it was going to be right-handed and playing soccer. So this one, they play soccer and being right-handed. This one, they do not play soccer. They, they, the four that we are seeing are those who are left-handed and being playing soccer at the same time. That was the, the, the situation of this question. You interpret in a real-life situation when it is like this. So let us do revise as many questions as we can. 